As you know, synthetic polymers can be broadly grouped into addition polymers and condensation polymers. In this video, we'll look specifically at condensation polymerization and the kinds of polymers that we can make with this process. We'll also look at how to draw the structure of a condensation polymer if you know its monomer and vice versa. But before we get to the actual polymers, a quick revision of condensation reactions. The word condense derives from a Latin word with the general meaning of causing something to be made more dense or pressed closer together. In this particular case, it's used in the sense of taking two separate molecules and causing them to join into one. The two reactions we're most interested in here are esterification and amidification. In esterification, we take a carboxylic acid, like ethanoic acid, say, and an alcohol, like 1-propanol, uh, and those two functional groups react together to give an ester. In this case, it would be propyl ethanoate. During this process, the OH group from the carboxylic acid and the hydrogen from the alcohol form water as a byproduct. Amidification is similar, but the reactants are a carboxylic acid, say ethanoic acid again, and an amine, say 1-propanamine. Water is still produced as a byproduct, but the main product here is an amide, N-propyl ethanamide. However, it's worth noting that the carboxylic acid is an acid and amines are bases. So when you try to do this reaction, you get a competing acid-base reaction, where the amine just takes a proton from the acid. So in practice, in the lab, it's often easier to make an amide by starting from an acyl chloride, which is just a carboxylic acid that had, that's had its OH group replaced by a chlorine atom. Here we've got ethanoyl chloride, the acyl chloride version of ethanoic acid, and it reacts with propanamine to give the same amide as above. The only difference is that the byproduct is now HCl, hydrochloric acid, instead of water. So imagine that you're intending to do a condensation reaction, but you start with these two reactants, hexane 1,6-dioic acid and hexane 1,6-diamine. I'm going to represent them like this to avoid having to draw out all of the carbon chains. The important thing for this reaction is the two functional groups on the end, not what's in the middle of the molecule. So you mix them together and at some point one of the acid groups encounters an amine on a neighbouring molecule and they react. They condense together to form an amide, losing water in the process. So now look at the product of this first reaction. One of the two original carboxylic acid groups is still there on one end and an amine group is left there on the other end. So the left hand end could react with another amine and the right hand end could react with another acid doubling the length of the chain. And the molecule that results from those two reactions still has an acid and an amine on either end so it can keep growing. This is the basis of condensation polymerization. Now let's see if we can write this polymer in proper shorthand notation. I'll write out a couple of sections of the full molecular structure. And to find the shorthand notation we have to identify what the repeating unit is. The trick is to start somewhere on the chain. Anywhere works, but it's easiest to start next to an obvious functional group and move along until you find the same sequence repeating. So if I start here, just to the left of an amide group, and I move along, uh, I come to another amide group, but notice that I haven't reached a repeat yet, because this amide group has the nitrogen on the left, whereas the other one had it on the right. So we keep going further, and finally we come to a repeat. So that gives us a shorthand notation that looks like this. Now we could also have started in the middle of the amide group, say, so the nitrogen forms the first part of the repeating unit. Moving along, I would finally get to the same amide group and I'd stop in the middle, and that would give a repeating unit that looks like this. There's no one correct place to start when you're working out the repeating unit for a polymer, as long as you correctly identify the place where the next unit starts. Although these two versions of the repeating unit start in a different place, they're both correct, and if you add up all the atoms shown in each version, you should have exactly the same formula for both. 
Notice also that, as you might expect, you can see evidence in the repeating unit of the original two monomers, the 6-carbon diamine and the 6-carbon dicarboxylic acid. This particular condensation polymer is called a polyamide because it's a polymer that's linked together with amide bonds. And it happens to be nylon 6-6, or sometimes called nylon 66. 6-6 uh, six, six because it's made from two reactants that each have a 6-carbon chain. And it's one of the family of nylon polymers and one of the most important polymers of the early to mid 20th century, particularly if you're in the market for reasonably priced stockings. Let's take another example. This molecule has the common name of glycolic acid, but it would be systematically named as 2-hydroxyethanoic acid. Notice that it has an acid group on one end and an alcohol on the other. That means that this compound can react with itself in an esterification reaction. Bring two molecules together and the acid end of one can react with the alcohol end of the other. This process can continue until you run out of monomer, producing polyglycolic acid, which belongs to the class of polyesters. If we draw the shorthand, it looks like this. Or an alternative way of writing the repeating unit would be like this.